Good evening, my darling. I had worried the potion I used on you was too potent. But, as always, my alchemy skill far exceeds my expectations. The sleeping draft I used on you is known to cause one of the most relaxing rests a human being can feel. I don't have much use for it myself being a vampire and all, but I hope you slept well. <laughs> you know, one of the issues with sleeping too well is that you become blissfully unaware of what's happening around you, such as being stolen in the middle of the night, tied to a chair and kidnapped. Ah, yes. Here comes the barrage of obvious questions asked by anyone who wakes up in a strange place. To answer the first and most pressing question you most likely have, yes, I have kidnapped you. I've taken you to my castle. You're currently residing in my laboratory slash library, a place you should be all too familiar with. And to answer your second obvious question, yes, I am that vampire you stole from. The very same vampire you knew would come for you. So why act so surprised, my darling? Kill you? <laughs> oh, don't flatter yourself, sweetheart. You pose less than a Lilliputian threat to me, so killing you, I fear, would be a total waste of effort. That being said, you do intrigue me quite a bit. And if I might say, you look absolutely ravishing this evening. I'd say it's been far too long since such a beauty graced the halls of my castle. But we both know that's not true. Is it? A little tip for your future crime endeavours, my darling. If you're going to steal from a 400-year-old vampire that not only has had more than enough time to memorise exactly what he has in his collection, but also has senses so keen he can tell when somebody has touched his stuff. At least leave a decoy behind. It makes it at least somewhat more likely I won't notice until you've done what you've needed to do. <sighs> oh, don't be coy. You know exactly what I'm talking about, you beautiful little thief. You stole three very precious alchemy books from my collection, and you also had the audacity to steal my brewing set as well. Fortunately for you, that wasn't my best brewing set, but the feeling's all the same. You knew full well I'd find out, and yet you still did it anyway. Has anyone ever told you how unfathomably capricious you are? I just can't make heads or tails of you. It's uncommon for a thief to have such disregard for their own life. Paradoxical, even. How can you spend your loot if you're dead? You did what you needed to do, and now you're ready to accept the consequences. <laughs> How very noble of you. What exactly were those consequences you thought I'd inflict upon you? Which begs an even more important question. What did you need to do? What was worth gaining? such consequences. Save the village. You were willing to risk life and limb for an impoverished little shithole town. It's filled with nothing but starving peasants and overworked farmers, desperately trying to beg the rain gods to bless them. Desperately trying to make it through another winter. Seems like quite a waste of a life, if you ask me, my darling.
You have so much fight left in you. God, I see such hatred and anger in those eyes. You really do care about that town, don't you? <laughs> Even when you're bound to a chair, with a beast standing before you who more than likely has enough power to end your life with a flick of his wrist, you still hold strong. Complete and utter resolve. Oh, yes. Yes, you will do very nicely. We haven't done talking yet before I reveal my plans for you. I had my gargoyle scouts watch over you. I had them follow you when you left my castle. I wanted to see why you had stolen my precious alchemy books. <laughs> you know, I let you go that night. I could have killed you. I knew you'd intruded on my castle the moment you walked in there, but I was just so curious. It's been so long since something has interested me as much as you. And I was even more intrigued when you stole three very specific books from my alchemy set. In my castle, I have riches beyond imagination. I have gold worth thousands of your town. I have everything a starving peasant like you could ever dream of. And yet you went straight for those alchemy books and my set. I just couldn't understand it. I couldn't understand your angle. You were so... ambiguous to me. So that's why I kept watch over you. Your town is riddled with a pestilence, isn't it? I know about that pestilence quite well. And I know about your town quite well too. I saw mothers burning their children. Fathers desperately trying to work to feed their family, yet the fever was so high they could barely take two steps out of their home before collapsing, joining the rest of the people taken by your plague. Your town is very sick indeed, and you tried everything to make a cure, didn't you? That's why you broke into my castle. That's why you did all of this. Because you're trying to make a cure for the pestilence. <laughs> you succeeded! The only thing you succeeded in was making this black sludge. In fact, no. You succeeded in doing quite the opposite of what you wanted to do. Uh, no, I believe it's mine. It was brewed with my alchemy set, using the knowledge from my rare alchemy tomes. So I have full rights to this, which means I am more than in my right to do this. Whoops. Oh, don't scream, you fool. I just saved your town. You didn't follow the instructions correctly. I looked under a microscope what you had created, and believe me, that was no cure. Quite the opposite, like I said. What you made was actually a catalyst, and it would have accelerated the microorganism's ability to breed. If you had administered that to those tragic people in your town, they would have been dead within a matter of hours. You utter and complete idiot. I know you had no other choice. Don't get me wrong. I thoroughly commend your effort. But a pestilence cure of that magnitude... It's not something that can be brewed in a peasant's house. It uses extremely uncommon ingredients. Nothing that someone like you could get their hands on. Some of those ingredients are very expensive. Some of those are very rare and expensive. And some of those are even extinct. So how the hell did you think you could pull that off? Using common garden herbs. 
Oh, listen to me, you damn fool. I saved your grubby little town from your own good intentions. You're very welcome, by the way. Now, if it'll shut you up, look at this. You see that? Unlike that black, murky virus aphrodisiac you made, this gold serum is actually what you were trying to make. Perfectly brewed and made with a master's hand. My hand. One drop of this in your town's water supply and the people will be cured the moment they ask for a drink. Which, given the hydroscopic nature of the pestilence, is almost certain to happen. Now, let's see how well you read my books. How long would it have taken me to brew something so powerful? Seven days, exactly. You see, right there, you should have known yours was flawed when it only took three days to finish distilling. I understand you were desperate, but you have to realise how dangerous alchemy can be when it isn't done correctly. You show so much promise in the alchemy world. I've never seen an uneducated peasant have such an aptitude for brewing. It's incredible, actually. And if you weren't such a fool, I would have liked to have taught you to do better. Anyway, as I was saying, it would have taken me seven days to have made this. And how long ago was it you stole my belongings? four days ago. So, what does that tell you about my intentions? No, you fool. It means I was working to cure your people's pestilence before you stole from me, you mewling quim. God! For someone who shows such promise in alchemy, you really aren't the sharpest tool in the shed, are you? <sighs> if you would have just waited... I would have cured your village, and they would have been none the wiser. They wouldn't have known a helpful vampire snuck in during the middle of the night and polluted their water supply with the only thing that will save them. And you would have got to live a long and happy life, unless another pestilence would have came around. In which case I would have cured it. Oh no, I will still cure your people, don't you worry. But, it comes at a price now, considering you've shown me such disrespect. And also, I don't really want to let your talents go to waste. See, that poison you made on the floor, it's awful, but it's also impressive. It is so impressive that someone like you got so close to brewing something so complicated. Now, the price for me curing your village is simple. I want you to be my assistant. I want you to work for me. You will clean my castle. You will be my butler, my maid, my gardener. But most importantly, you will be my lab assistant. What I'm offering you here is something I don't often give people, which is a working insight to my knowledge. Don't agree too quickly. There's one other thing. In order to keep up with me, I'll need to infect you with vampirism. I'll turn you into a vampire. Do you still accept this job? That's very astute of you. You really did read that book, didn't you? Yes. Once you're done working for me, I can cure you. I can turn you back into a human if you want. You see, I'm a very unusual vampire. Because, unlike most vampires, I chose to become like this. The human lifespan is so remarkably diminutive. I needed hundreds of years to complete my work. And although you might think my work is noble, curing pestilences, creating medicines, it's actually selfish. I do this because I want to prove to myself that I am the best alchemist who's ever lived. And so, in order to extend my life, I brewed vampirism and I infected myself. 
And thus, I am now immortal. Able to continue my work till my heart's content. Which won't ever happen. Not until every disease in the human and monster world is eradicated. That's another thing as well. Seeing as though you'll be a vampire, you'll be joining the monster world, which I'm sure you've read and heard all about. So that will be a pretty big adjustment to you. We won't just be curing and helping humans, you know. We'll be curing and helping all life forms. Because that is an alchemist's job. To unlock the mysteries of the universe. To unravel viruses. And to be masters of biology. So, do you accept my terms? Will you be my assistant? And will you let me change you into a vampire so you can keep up with me? And in return, your town will be cured overnight. <laughs> Just what I hoped for. That eagerness in your eyes mixed with fear and trepidation, is just what I wanted to see. I will make you an incredible alchemist, and you will save many lives. Whether you do it for purely selfish reasons like me, just to prove that you're the best, or you do it for noble and heroic reasons, which I assume is more your flavor, it doesn't matter. The world of alchemy will benefit from having you in it. Okay then, a deal's a deal. Frederick! F Frederick? Fred! Uh, hi, Fred. Good evening, Master. How can I serve you? No need to look alarmed, this is Frederick. Frederick is my head gargoyle. He's very loyal, and he is very good at his job. You will treat him with the utmost respect, and you will refer to him as Mr. Frederick, okay? In, in, in terms of the food chain, he's higher than you, alright? Are you having a good evening, Frederick? Yes, Master. Who's your friend? This, Frederick, is my new assistant. They're very new to the monster world as well, so be patient with them if you will. They will behave themselves, I assure you. Now Fred, I need you to take this vial to that grubby little town I was having you keep tabs on. The one where they come from, Master? Yes, the one where they come from. Take this vial and drop it in their water supply, in the well the north of the village, to be specific. That's their main drinking hole. Once you have done that, report back to me and let me know how it went. I will do your bidding, Master. Farewell. And just like that, your town is cured. You're very welcome. In return, though, you are now mine. Are you ready to become a vampire like me? and learn the secrets of alchemy to do as you will on the natural world. Very good. I've never done this before, but I've read about it many times and I've even seen it done. I'm not sure if it will hurt, but in any case, hold still. Ow. <laughs> Oh, forgive me. I took some of your blood just then. <laughs> but the venom from my fangs more than permeated your body. How do you feel? Yes, that's the beginning stages. The chill. You will get colder and colder and colder until eventually you'll die and your body will be reborn as a vampire's body. You'll be stronger, quicker, more agile, and more powerful than you've ever been. And when that happens, I'll guide you through it. I'll make sure you don't make any mistakes. It's easy to become feral 
after the vampiric venom has taken effect. I'll make sure that won't happen. You may have some interesting powers manifest as well. For instance, I can do this. I call it my red light power. It's a healing beam. If I find an animal in the woods that has been hurt, I need only fire my healing beam at it, and all of a sudden, its cells will begin reproducing quicker than you could imagine, bringing the animal from the brink of death, stemming the bleeding, and saving them. I believe it manifested because of my natural gift for alchemy and healing. I think powers manifest based on the personality. It also gives me unnatural healing abilities, which is very useful, considering I only became a vampire for the immortality. So yes, I'll be interested to see what your power is. In any case, it's time for you to rest. Gargoyles, Master. Master. take my assistant to their chambers. They have a long and painful night ahead of them. But when they wake up, they will be immortal. At least until I cure them, anyway. That's if they want to be cured. You'll find being a vampire is quite intoxicating. It's quite nice knowing trivial things like death don't affect you anymore. This is Lawrence and Juniper, by the way. Juniper is the head of the Maid Gargoyles, and Lawrence is the head of the Butler Gargoyles. Ask them for anything, and they will give it to you. They will take care of you. But don't ever forget their names. Okay then, off you go. Oh, I almost forgot. <laughs> You aren't going to be going far if those bindings on you now, are you? Farewell, my assistant. I'll see you tomorrow. And we can begin your alchemy training.